ever been listening to your favorite podcast and think, hey, I want to start my own? Then you need Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First, everyone's favorite word, free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. In this bone chilling and blood spilling finale, you see that people will do anything to keep their secrets safe and their livelihoods protected. Who knew that one attempted suicide would cause so many problems? is what Kaysen thought when all of his secrets started rearing their ugly heads. When his secrets come out, he does the one thing he thought he would never do, which is commit a murder and try to cover it up. When the one person he thought would never turn his back on him does just that, his life takes a wild turn no one will ever forget. All of Malice's secrets are on display for his wife and the world to see. But that is not stopping him from trying to work on his marriage. Realizing that his wife is not budging, he finds a new friend. But will she live up to Cam's potential? Or will Malice realize that he has more fight in him to get his wife back? Cam woke up with her life playing out on TV as if she were a movie star. After she is released from the hospital, she tries to steer clear of her husband. But he is making that impossible by popping up everywhere and stalking her on social media when she notices that phoenix may have a new girlfriend feelings that she thought were gone came rushing back at once will cam still go through with the divorce or will she realize that true love is worth fighting for hello my beautiful people and welcome back to the bibliophiles bookcase i am your host erica the bibliophile Child, we are here for the third and final part of A Malice's Love. And baby, it's a doozy. Grab you some snacks, get you a drink, and let's go on this wild ride. So picking up where we left off from part two, Cade has rushed Cam to the hospital and he gave the doctors the pill bottle that he found, you know, um, by her bedside and he also grabbed the letter that she wrote now he's been calling their parents leaving voicemails you know telling them to come to the hospital and what happened with no response from them and it's going on two hours he called Shelly and she showed up right away um he tells Shelly tells him about Malice sleeping with Tracy and at first Kate is like no way my mother would never and she's like you know what do i have to lie about this and they read the letter together and you know she left a little bit for everybody telling Cade, you know don't be mad at me i love you goodbye you know just a little piece of something for everybody even malice it was only three words congratulations you broke me so when his parents or their parents finally arrive with Kalina, they're surrounded by cameras, which I understand he's a judge and they're like in the spotlight or whatever, but Kate goes off. He's like, so you show up not only two hours late, but you turn this into a fucking publicity stunt while my sister is in the back fighting for her life? What the fuck is wrong with you? And like the lawyer has to intervene because all of this is going down in front of the cameras. Like, you know, he's just upset about his sister, but the family is still a unit. They're gonna work it out. Um and so then when they all sit down together, Tracy is like, son, did she leave a note? as if she's really concerned and he just flat out ignores her he don't say nothing to her and Kason's like i know you hear your mama he like man really at this point fuck the both of y'all um so mayhem is watching the news with corrupt and they see the story about cam at this point it's allegedly committing suicide so they don't know if she's alive or dead so he has to go into malice's room 
and malice is calling cam at that point trying to leave a voicemail you know he's been crying he's really upset about this because he knew what this was going to do to them and the fact that everything came to a head he's really like heartbroken about this um so he gets malice and they rush to the hospital where as soon as kate sees him he pounces on him but malice doesn't fight back he let him get his licks in and he just lays there and take it and then kate sees corrupt and you know he getting all loud and corrupt tells him you better simmer the fuck down because you know you ain't about that life and his lawyer has to also tell him you know people have their phones out in the waiting room recording them because okay yeah the reporters and stuff are still outside but you got regular people in here waiting to see their family members as well so they record this shit too like ooh, what's gonna pop off so the doctor brings the family into a conference room and tells them that cam is stable but the baby did not make it and he also found mercury in her system so someone was poisoning her and um at that point two policemen and a woman in a black suit walk in everyone is now a suspect because it's just like some shit is going on like first of all this woman tried to commit suicide and there's mercury in her system so cam's kidneys have failed and she's now in an induced coma and she's been placed on the donor list and you know everybody agrees to be tested to see if they're a match for her and the doctor says you know he's going to test one family at a time for a match and while one family is getting tested the other family can go visit her um and at first Kaysen tries to make some noise but malice is like technically i'm her husband so if i didn't want y'all here y'all would have to get out and he's you know Kaysen's looking at the doctor and he's like you know it's true he's being nice by allowing y'all to stay because as her husband and now her like next of kin he has the authority over what goes on with her um so the woman that was in the suit her name is olivia bradshaw she is with adult protective services um so she's like you know i'm gonna be asking some questions around here see what's going on um and you know cam is i guess now one of her clients of course cat was the one who mailed the package to camp store and she's feeling so good about that so when there's a knock on her door she's expecting it to be malice you know to show up to choke her out cuss her out and hoping that they have sex but it's actually connor now connor was one of her law students um but him what was that chick's holly i was gonna say i forgot that bitch name holly like everybody failed passing the bar but with her help they all passed now um so he was showing up to thank her and he's like looking at her and they flirting or whatever and he's shocked when she lets him know that cam is married she's like do you know that your girlfriend is married to my boy toy it's like you doing all of this to be with him but you are like you degrade him he's just your boy toy like you have to hide him y'all would never really be in a relationship like you enjoyed the sex so much you done allowed it to blind you to thinking that it was something more than what it was um and so like they're about to have sex but when she asks him if he has a condom he says no so she tells him no glove no love and he has to leave she didn't really want to sleep with him anyway so i'm like why why would you but i think at this point it was just her wanting to feel something from somebody like any type of man would basically do at that point um so the doctor comes back and tells them that none of them are a match so corrupt text trent and informs him of what's going on with cam and then he's summoned by one of the ceos telling him that the warden no my bad nope that messed that all up he goes to the warden himself and gets him to pardon him for six months and at first the warden is like now you know i can't like come on now like we've been cool the whole time you've been here you've been a model uh inmate but that's something i just can't do and trent is like 
my daughter is about to die. Just give me the six months until it's time for me to go to Arkansas and let me spend that time with my daughter. And so when he walks into the hospital telling the doctor to test him, everybody is shocked. Like, how the fuck are you out? How are you here? And um, the doctor is like, okay, cool. He ain't worried. He's like, y'all family drama? I really don't give a fuck. My main concern is uh, my patient that's back there fighting for her life. And, of course, Trent is a perfect match. Um, And while they're out, like, in the waiting room again, Kat sends Malice a text telling him she wish she could blow up the hospital with them in it. And, you know, like, that's why Cam lost the bait. Like, she just talking mad shit through this text message. And Malice get up because he's like, okay, this bitch want me to come see her and I'm finna grant that wish for her. But uh, Mayhem reads the text at the same time and grabs his arm and tells him that's what she wants and we're not giving it to her like we more worried about cam and about trent while they're going through surgery fuck her and it's taking everything in him because he's like you know she done disrespected my wife for the last fucking time and you know basically trying to blame everything on her while she did get the ball rolling it's like this is your shit and own up to it so Olivia comes in with search warrants for their homes, telling them, you know, because somebody tried to poison her. So we looking through everybody's shit to see what's going on. And because Kason's a lawyer, he's like, I don't care what this paper says. You don't have the right to enter my home. It's like, you not above the law, nigga. Like, yes, we do. It's already done. You know, this was really just giving y'all courtesy of what's about to happen. So, um... And she also lets them know when Cam is released from the hospital, she will be placed on a seven-day hold in the psych world, ward, Lord. Um, then she will be released into the care of her father, which is Trent. The surgery was a success, and Cam has to stay in the hospital for two weeks, you know, see how the kidney reacts to her body, make sure it doesn't try to reject it, um, all that type of stuff. So the police walk out of the Lewis's residence with an evidence bag. And Casey been looking at Tracy's like, you know, what did you do? And she don't want to answer. She's like, you trying to make this up? You, you could tell when somebody guilty because they just like the shit they start saying. It's just like, girl, you making it obvious that she was the one. Talking about how much she loved her daughter. She would never. And it's like, bitch, if anybody hated her for real, for real, it was you. And everybody knows it. Um. So when they walk out with the evidence bag, he tries to jump on her and they're both arrested for attempted murder. Cam wakes up and is confused by seeing Trent. She's like, you know, what are you doing here? How did this happen? And the doctor comes in and explains everything that happens, you know, like leading up to her being there. And Trent tells her, you know, I have something to tell you. And she's like, with everything that's going on, what, you're probably going to tell me that you're my father. And so he don't say nothing. And she's, she just starts shaking her head like, no, there's no fucking way. Like, everybody around me has just been fucking lying to me forever. Like, and Olivia comes in and tells her that she will be released into Trent's care. Um... So she thinks she's about to go. She's like, okay, cool. Let's wrap this on up. And then Olivia and the doctor are looking at her as if something's wrong with her, as if she's crazy. And it's just like, nobody explained to her that she had to stay there um, in the hospital for the next seven days. It's like, she literally just woke up and is coming to grips with everything that has happened. So why are y'all looking at her as if she's crazy? And Olivia tells her that she has to go to the psych ward because she attempted suicide and she's like at this point cam has given up she's like you know what really what the fuck ever just let it be what it is um and so her first visitors are Cade and shelly and Cade is upset which is obviously he's like you know you mean the world to me why would you try to leave me you're my best friend and like I said, Cam has given up, so she really don't give too much of a fuck about nothing. She, <clears throat> excuse me, quote, 
how the fuck am I your best friend, but you let me get abused my whole life? You didn't try hard enough to get me away from Casey, so fuck you, end quote. And Kay pulls out his phone, like opens it, uh, clicks on it a few times and slams it down on the table. It's a list of places he applied for and was denied. He tells her, I have a credit score of 750, so there's no reason he shouldn't be able to get a place. So it's obvious that Kaysen was blocking him from getting a place to move into and to move them out of it. And he leaves and tells Shelly, like, you know, Shelly, if you're riding with me, come the fuck on. Um, and Olivia mentions that she has another visitor and Cam immediately knows who it is and she's like, no. And Olivia tells her, I think this is something you should do. This is a conversation you should have. And it's just like, and it's going to come into play later, like real soon. But it's like, how the fuck did you think that was a good idea when he's part of the reason why she's in there? And so he comes in sporting a new tattoo of her name around his collarbone. And he's wearing the jersey that she made for him and of course this meeting goes terrible and it ends with both of them saying horrible shit to each other and it's just like there's no reason why you thought it would be a good idea for them to come in of course she's going for low blows because she still feels a way about him sleeping with her mother and lying to her and he feels like she should just basically let the shit go and they can still work towards being married even though she keeps telling this nigga like i want a divorce this shit is fucking over with um and so malice comes out like outside where his family is and he don't say nothing he just started kicking over a trash can and just like kicking the shit out of this uh trash can and he's yelling and he's just like really upset so olivia comes out and explains to the baileys and trent what happened during the visit And while she's talking, there's an attraction forming between Trent and Olivia, but neither one of them are acting on it because they got too much going on. Um, I don't know if I mentioned before, but Trent is 55 with his situation going on with being in jail for so long. And Olivia, Olivia is 45, living with her parents, and she's currently going through a divorce. Her soon to be ex is going through a midlife crisis, and he kicked her out of their home. And he now has a woman 20 years younger than them. And he has moved her in with her three kids. Um, She has a younger sister, Olena, you know, my boo from A Mayhem Love. She's her older sister. Um, So Alina comes in the room as Olivia is talking to their dad. And she has bloody clothes telling them that she just saw uh, Olivia soon to be ex and a new woman and jumped on both of them. And um, she's like, you know, ain't no way they thought they was going to just be out walking around acting like a happy family knowing that he did that shit to you. So yeah, I jumped on both of them. And the ex, or soon to be ex, sends her a voicemail, I mean, not a voicemail, a text message like, you wild for having your sister. It's like, you know she ain't have her do nothing. And you had her jump on both of them. Like, it just sounded like you got your ass whipped and you mad about it. But, oop, too bad, playboy. Oh, excuse me. I had to take a drink. Um, so, Alina comes in the room with a dress and tells Olivia, girl, we going out tonight. We going to have some fun. You not going to be held up in this room like your life is over. And she convinces her to go with her to the strip club. She's like, you know, we're going to turn up. Woo, woo. And of course, the Baileys and Trent are also there. So Olivia and Trent leave together. And they have sex. And they agree to be friends with benefits until he goes back in. Kaysen's lawyer hands him pictures of the doctor with other women. And they go to the hospital, the hospital, Lord have mercy, to blackmail him to get him to lie and tell Olivia that the poison was accidental. Turns out that the doctor and his wife, they're swingers. Like he calls her on the phone and everything. And she's like, um, I hope you're not calling the cancel because I can't wait. I can't wait to see you uh fuck this other woman. 
And he's like, no, nah, I'm just going to remind you to pick up the strawberries and the chocolate. You know, like I'll be home in a minute. And as soon as he hangs up, he tells him, now y'all get the fuck out of my office. Um, you know, I'm a doctor with integrity. Get the fuck out. Um, ain't no way I'm lying to say that this is accidental and one of y'all is actually trying to kill this girl. Um, so when Kaysen gets back, back to his office, the attorney general is waiting for him and tells him that he's being placed on administrative leave. He suggested, but Kaysen is like, no, he's like, um, I was trying to be nice about it, but you might want to take this. And so, you know, he has to be seen walking out with the box with all his stuff while reporters are, like, looking for him. So when he gets home, Tracy is there, and he catches her masturbating to the sex videos in Cam's iCloud. And they get into an argument about who's the worst person, who's been the worst parent. Um, and it ends with Kaysen choking Tracy to death. And, like, as soon as she took her last breath, his lawyer walks in and, like, catches him. He's like, man, what the fuck? You just make my job so fucking hard. So, later in the night when it's, like, pitch dark, they dump Tracy's body. Like, they put her body in the car and they uh, rolled it into the river. Kat poses as Cam's lawyer to come see her while she's in the psych ward. And as soon as Cam sees her, she's like, girl, what are you doing here? Like, at this point, I'm begging you to leave me the fuck alone. But Kat comes in there and tries to lie about her and Malice being together now. And Malice just didn't have the heart to tell her. And she's like, that's funny because when I just saw him, he was begging for us to stay together and as well has my name tattooed um on his body so it's just like okay like please leave um so she leaves uh upset but then she sees the baileys at a grocery store and approaches them like basically talking shit and she's assured that in her white womanness that malice isn't going to touch her because she's white rich and it's out in the open and so Malice chokes her up anyway, but Miss Mama Bailey, Miss Angela, tells like son, put her down, leave her alone, back the fuck up. And she proceeds to whoop Kat's ass. And she's like, you know, that's for you taking advantage of my young ass son. And you know, the rest of it is cause you won't leave him the fuck alone. Get your desperate ass on somewhere. And if you come near my son again, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you. Even worse than what I just did. And her ass is left out on the floor because then nobody helped her up at all. She had to take herself to the hospital, passing out right in the doorway, which I was like, damn, she must have really whooped her ass. Um, Olivia gives Cam her phone and headphones to play music because it's time for her to go home. And it's like, it's reporters out there and they're going to be trying to ask you a whole bunch of questions. Just put these in your ear, turn the volume all the way up and just make it to the car. And so that's what she does. And Olivia sits in the front with Trent and she gets in the back and she keeps the headphones in so she doesn't have to talk to Trent either. She's like, you know, she don't want to talk to anybody. And while she's still listening to the music, a text message comes comes through from Alina. And this is how Cam finds out that um, Olivia and Trent are sleeping together as well as Alina calling her crazy. So she throws... Olivia's phone in the front and it's like you fucking this nigga and Olivia <clears throat> excuse me starts to apologize but Trent is like no we don't uh, apologize to disrespectful children and it's like no nah, we not doing this because it's like y'all have thrown what is it curve after fucking curve at Cambridge and uh she just has to deal with this shit. Like, there's no way you got out of jail and start fucking this woman who was supposed to be helping her. Because in a way, they have grown close. Um, almost, I, don't, I guess she sees her as a friend. And it's just like, she's supposed to be helping her and looking out for her best interest. And it's like, you don't think it's a little fucked up that I got to find out that you're sleeping out 
sleeping out, sleeping with the father that I just found out that I had. Like, man, fuck all y'all. So when they get to his house, she rushes out and um, she opens the door to hear people say surprise, but she just goes up to her room and locks the door. Kay comes up and convinces her to come out. And it's like, you know, basically those are two grown people. Mind your business and just let it be what it is. But I feel her though. It's just like, I don't even get to get him to myself for a little bit because he gonna be sleeping with this one. Like, it don't make sense, but it makes sense all at the same time. It's just like, It's fucking frustrating. And I feel her pain. It's like, man, fuck all y'all. Um, once again, Malice is there. So they get into words again. And she punches him dead in the mouth. Because he had like kind of yoked her up. And uh, his mom was about to intervene again. He's like, mom, back up. She like this shit. Who you belong to? And she's like, you know, Malice. And he like, that's right. Because I can do whatever I want to you. da, 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 da. And it was sexy, but when she finally, like, gained some composure, she punched that nigga right in the mouth. Um, so, Kaysen sent some dudes to try to kill the Baileys, but, of course, they get to them first. And the Baileys minus Malice have dinner with Trent, Olivia, and Cam, where Corrupt and Trent explain everything to Cam, like how this all started and how it got to be the way that it is what everybody did what their involvement was and so she's just like damn like damn 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 how much can one heart take because they just breaking my girl down but she like takes it with a grain of salt and she's ready to get back to work she's like i need to get back to my shop i can't just stay up in this house forever. I can't keep feeling sad for myself. I have to move on. So Trent asks to go with her. And she's like, you know, I guess you can tag along for the day or whatever. And he gives her keys to a new car. And it's her dream car, that white Mercedes that um is, what is it? Can't, what am I trying to say? malice the car that malice had that he let her drive like he had the black one he bought her a white one and the tag says mb wife so she knows that malice is the one that bought it for her instead of trent so when she pulls up she sees that there's a new dance studio and she goes and introduces herself to the owner saying you know they could do business together since he is a a dance studio if he ever needs costumes He can come see her or t-shirts made or anything like that. And, (coughs) oh, excuse me. And he also teaches her like a little eight count. Um, So Malice is waiting for her at Trent's house. Like when she gets off work, once again, asking for another chance. And Cam tells him, please, like, just let it go. Just leave me alone. Just let me go. She does this. She just doesn't feel as if their relationship can work out. She's like, nigga, you slept with my mother and you're a prostitute. Like two things that she just cannot let go. And he doesn't see the problem with it because it's he's more so focused on thinking she only cares that other people are going to find out or other people are going to know. And it's like, that's not the only thing. Like, yeah, that's a part of it, but that's not the only thing. Um, so Malice then goes to a bar and gets drunk. Cause he's like, man, fuck it. I can't make it work with my wife. I'm just gonna have to let it go. And so he makes plans to, Look up with the bartender. He's like, you know, I'm staying at this hotel over there. I'm going to leave a key there for you. You know, when you get off, just come up. So he also steps out to like, he gets the key, leave it for her. And then he steps out to make a phone call. And when the person picks up, he's like, do you love me? And you know, it's not Cam because he just like tried to talk to her. And she said, no. So who else could it be? But Kat, so she says yes, and he tells her, you know, I'm at this location, come pick me up. 
So they're sitting in her car and they have a talk. He's like, you know, why would you do that to me? You know, I loved her. You know, that was my wife. Like you knew what we had was never going to be that. So why would you destroy my life like that? And she claims like, you know, I loved you. I did all of this for you. Like, how could you do me like that? It's like, yeah, you set him up to have sex with other women to make money. Like, it's not the love that you think it is. And even if it was, it's like he doesn't have to be with you just because you feel he should. Because <clears throat> it's like, it's not like you just got to have sex with him for free while he was sleeping with the other women and making them pay. You also paid. And it wasn't just out the kindness of your heart. Y'all had a business relationship. And I just, she just don't seem to understand that, especially, but she also tells him about her killing her husband and his mistress. And like, really, even though she was sleeping with this young black man, she still had a hatred for black people. It's like, you don't love him. You low-key hate him and the fact that this black boy could tell you no and not want to be with you is what upset you and made you like ruin his life like this and so he kills her and then he sends a, a code to corrupt and mayhem and they come up to the scene and clean him up and clean him up and get rid of everything so he heads back to the hotel with the bartender and they just chill. Like, he was going to try to have sex with her, but he's just drained. And he just, he like, I just want to chill. Just let me rub on your booty. Like, we can talk. But sex will not be had today. <laughs> um, and she agrees with it. So, it's been two weeks, and Malice hasn't left the house. Like, he's basically giving up on life. But Mayhem gives him a reality check and says, just because life isn't going the way you want it to doesn't mean give up on everything. Um, and when he goes to see the bartender, he's, and while he's hanging out with the bartender, he served. That was another reason why he hadn't left the house in two weeks. Cause he knew that Cam was looking for him to serve him with papers. So if he didn't answer the door and didn't go out anywhere, she couldn't serve him. So it's like, and as soon as he stepped off the house, immediately he was served with divorce papers. Kaysen has Tracy on camera wiping down Cam's room with whatever that special potion she said has been in her family for a long time. Um, but there's no way that they can use it because when he calls his lawyer over to show it to him, like, we can use this, right? And put it all off on her. And the lawyer looks at him and is like, you know there's no fucking way we could use this video. And he's like, why not? Because they going to it's not like you can cut just a portion of Tracy wiping down her room. It's like you are also on camera beating the shit out of your stepdaughter uh, who, you know, the world just recently found out was your stepdaughter. It's like they're going to want to see the rest of the video if you did try to chop it up. And it's just like, why the fuck are you beating that girl like that? And he has no explanation for it. And so... <sighs> that was great so it's like basically they're stuck where they're at because it's just like um nigga what the fuck so malice contests the divorce and they have to go to court and in court they're arguing in front of the judge and she tells them on more than one occasion talk to me do not talk to each other y'all talk to me not each other but they can't help going back and forth tit for tat just saying a little shit to each other to the judge is like you know what y'all going to counseling y'all gotta go to ugh, lord y'all gotta go to counseling separately and together and if y'all don't then i'm a further prolong uh this divorce so you know and so once again they get outside they arguing yet again and cam jumps on malice and tells him that she hates the day she met him and she's glad that she lost their baby and it's like skirt pump the brakes i understand you upset but baby never never because even if you had a um you know like if the baby would have made it through and you decided to keep your baby 
never blame the baby for somebody else's actions. Like, like if you feel like you're not ready, cool. Like behind you 100% because nobody has to force you to have a child. But don't talk down on your baby like that just for that nigga. Fuck him. Um, and so later she's having a drink with her friends at the bar. Like she just so sick of this nigga. All he got to do is sign the fucking papers. Let me be done. But it's like, girl, you know, this nigga loves you. He told you, like, when y'all got married, he said there's no getting the divorce. It's like, of course, she didn't know what that meant and, like, what it pertained to. But it's like he told you what it was and how he coming behind you. So Connor walks in and he's holding hands with old girl that he claimed was his, was his friend that he been cheating on her with and asked to talk to her privately. So they go outside, and he started getting a little handsy with her and tells her, you know, don't think because you got your little thugged-out husband that you could just talk to me any kind of way. But um, Malice intervenes with a gun and tells Connor to step off. But it's like he's holding hands with the bartender with one hand, and he got the gun with the other one. So when he gets Connor to leave, he then turns to Cam and like, Cam, this is, she's like, I know you're not trying to introduce me to your bitch. And little bartender is like, who you call, ah, 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 ah. little mama, this ain't about you. We don't care about you. Mm-mm. I don't even care what your name is. That's why I ain't write it down. Cause I don't care to remember like, bitch, you're not important. He's married. You just something to do. And y'all still ain't had sex in all this time. You're just his friend. Y'all just be hanging out. Back the fuck up while he talked to his wife. Um, and so she walks away because she's like, I'm not finna stay here with you motherfuckers. Um, and so she leaves and goes to her shop and like she walks around her shop a little bit. Then she goes over to the dance studio. So her and Dante, you, they talking and he's like, you know, come on, let me take you to get something to eat. Let me take you out. And she accepts. So they make it to the diner. They sit down and they order their food. And next thing you know, Malice is walking up and telling the waiter, um, you can go ahead and wrap this up, little mama, because she not staying to eat this shit. And pulls her up out of there talking about some what you doing. Like, nigga, I literally just saw you like an hour ago holding hands with another bitch. Why the fuck are you following me trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing? But it was actually Mayhem who informed him, like, you know, your wife over here with another nigga. But it's like, but you not going off on your brother about the bitch that he hanging out with. Stay out of my business. Um, and so when they have their counseling session together, Cam expresses how she needs space. She has too many things going on at once, like I said, and being pressured to stay married to him by him and other people is not helping her out. And, um, it's also not helping her shaky mental health right now. So Malice agrees to leave her alone which is so and it's crazy because it happens just like this it's like he agrees to leave her alone and he does leave her alone and as soon as he does she finds herself checking up on him though through social media and sees that he's getting even closer with the bartender now before when she like wasn't paying him no attention that he was still like on her he was tagging her and stuff or would send her uh, Snapchats of pictures of him and old girl and claim that it was an accident, like trying to make her jealous, but she wouldn't like respond to it. And so it's time for court to see if there will be a trial for the attempted murder of Cam against um, Kaysen. So Malice shows up with the bartender again, and it's like they they the last one that comes in, and they sit like in the back together. Um, and she sees this like while she's up on the stand testifying and after she gives her testimony like right before she gets up her lawyer plays the recording of casing beating her after she came back from the trip and you know like finding a device in his bag and like burst into the room and it's like you hear her screams and it is just heart-wrenching and you know like everybody is just so taken aback of finding out that this is what the judge 
does to his daughter. And so Trent tries to attack Kaysen because it's like, bitch, you do that to a defenseless girl. Do that shit to me. Do that shit to somebody who will really beat your ass. Come up against me. Do that with me. And of course, uh, he's held back and protected by security, so don't nothing happen to him. Um, so after you know, the court date. She's planning to meet up with her girls because they're having a lingerie party. Just to get together, put on some lingerie, feel sexy, just hang out, just, you know, relax. Um, But before she goes, like, starts getting ready, Trent gives her a check for $22 million. It was actually supposed to be 25 because he was going to give it to her on her 25th birthday. But, you know, with the circumstances that are happening and he's going to go back to jail soon he's like you know i just feel like i should give this to you now and so when she goes upstairs and starts getting ready for the party malice shows up with the divorce papers signed and even though this is what she's been wanting and said that she does want when it actually happens she gets emotional and so she goes into the bathroom and like gives herself a little pep talk like you know you've been saying this is what you wanted and you finally got it so you know like there's no reason to be upset and when she comes out malice is there again because he like walked out the room came back in and they start screaming and having sex and shelly called her like bitch what are you doing you getting real sexy to be in a room with a bunch of bitches like you know ain't nobody gonna actually be here to take this lingerie off you like come on and um malice tells her you know tell her what you're doing and they actually still have sex while uh the girls are listening to her on the phone and she gets loud to the point where trent busts in the room because you know she calls malice daddy as well so her screaming daddy with her actually with her actual daddy in the house he come busting in the room and just he like man what the fuck (laughs) this ain't what i wanted to see i don't want to see my girl like this um so the next morning malice and cam walk downstairs and olivia is already there and it's like real somber and cam like you know, we could leave. Like, is there a problem? Um, Olivia is pregnant and Cam is so excited. She's like, you know, but the reality hits that Trent is going back to jail soon. So this is another child that he's going to be leaving behind to be raised by someone else. And so he feels a way about it. Um, But, you know, like, they support him. Like, you know, the child is going to be very well taken care of. There's nothing for you to worry about. Um, And Malice and Cam, wait, no, before that, the news reports that Tracy and her car were pulled from the lake. And Cam is not moved at all. She's like, he killed her. I know he killed her. And I really don't feel a way about her being dead. I really don't care. Um. But Malice and Cam are going back to counseling to work things out. They're going to stay together. And so bartender hits Malice up and like, you know, did you see your ex-wife? Mother's car has been pulled from the lake. And he like, ooh, she not an ex yet. Don't jinx it. And from her text, he could tell she got an attitude. So he's like, you know, is there something you want to get off your chest? She's like, yeah, I find it real funny how you've been hanging out with me all this time. And, you know, you just go back to her like that. And it's like, if we friends, how you claim we was friends, you know I didn't want to get a divorce. It's like the way he talked about her to any and everybody, I know he kept it real. You was just hoping that if you stayed around long enough, he would actually leave her and you would be the rebound. But that's your fault. Um, So he like, girl, whatever. Go on somewhere. Bye. Um. Kaysen is arrested and told that his lawyer committed suicide, revealing everything. So, but then the detective, another detective comes in and lets him know that he's being released and he has a new lawyer. It's Connor. But everything ain't good because when Connor drops him off, he's like, man, get the fuck out of my car. You ruined any chance I had of being 
a elite lawyer or something like that. And Case, I'm like, he ain't got no power no more. So he just flies out the car without saying nothing. Um, but when he gets home and I guess like the reality of everything hits him, he tries to commit suicide. But the Baileys and Trent are there to get him down. And they do to him what he has been doing to Cameron. And that's beat his ass with leather belts. So they're just coming from every which way. But they don't kill him though. Because it's like, no, you're going to face your crimes for what you did. Um, so now it's time for Tracy's funeral. But Cam, like, she really has no emotions about it. She has a little flask that she's drinking out of. And Cam is like, uh, not Cam, Malice. Like, don't you want to slow down a little bit? And he has to, like, snatch the liquor from her. And she's being kind of loud. And he said, now... If you want to cause a scene, I'm going to cause a fucking movie. Calm your ass down and just, you know, just get through the funeral. And, um, bartender shows up claiming to want to support her friend, which y'all not even friends no more. Because in that text message, he told y'all that it was a wrap for whatever y'all had going on. And Cam clocked it and she's like, you want to show support for your friend, for his wife's mother that die like girl please ain't nobody stupid get your ass on um and malice pulls her off and throws her in the truck and it's like what the fuck is you doing and she's like you know what you can go ahead and take me to that white bitch's house too because if we gonna work this out just let me beat everybody ass and he's like she what and you know she makes it clear like i've decided we gonna stick it out together um but go ahead and take me to that bitch's house and he tells her you know she's dead i killed her and this turns her on because she's like oh daddy you killed for me <laughs> and this nigga gets close up in the, in the chest and he's like hell yeah and i'll do it again too it's like my <laughs> nigga go away but um they have sex in the car like and get finished right before everybody makes it back in um Cam is in the shop going through her emails when she receives this from Tracy. I'm going to read it in its entirety because the shit is ridiculous. Dear Cambridge, sorry if I'm all over the place, but I'm freestyling and typing as my thoughts come. The subject of this came out of nowhere. I just feel like dying, so it fits perfectly. I pray that this email finds you in good health. Like, bitch, who are you? Uh, Alexander Hamilton? Um... As a woo, as a mom, I know I failed you. I know that I didn't treat you the way that you should be treated as a daughter. I failed you because I didn't get you away from that monster the first time he hit you. I begged Kaysen for a divorce so I could live happily ever after with Trent, but he told me he would kill me before he let that happen. Honestly, I loved your, in parentheses, real father. Trent was everything. I was so afraid to leave Kaysen because I didn't want him to hurt Trent and he still ended up getting life in prison because he loved me. When I was with Trent, I hadn't felt anything like that from Kaysen in years. I'm crying typing this because Trent made me feel things that Kaysen never made me feel. Now I'm kicking myself because we would have been a happy we would have been a family, but I know that will never happen now. Cam, I failed you because I didn't protect you from getting your heart broken. The moment I knew about Malice, I should have told you what he was, but I was selfish. I wanted him because he made me feel something physically. I hadn't felt from Kaysen in decades, so you just have a history of not feeling shit with your husband. Instead of trying to work it out with your husband, you keep bringing other people into the fucking situation. Um where we at i'm sorry that i had moments of insanity by wanting my daughter's husband honestly he felt like shit when he found out that you were my daughter he canceled my appointments that same day but i continued to call him and try to see him he didn't budge and he blocked me every time one of my co-workers he was messing with as well got blocked i can really say that he didn't cheat on you when you got married to him the selfishness and jealousy in me made me hack your iCloud and i saw that you and malice had gotten married kalina never told me which cam never believed anyway she's like i know my sister wouldn't betray me like betray me like that 
the insane part of me made me watch the videos of you two in your phone making love. This is going to be weird, but please don't stop reading. The, whew, child, listen to this doozy. The way he looks at you when he is making love to you is unmatched. Kason stopped looking at me like that 25 years ago. The way he bites his lip when he is drilling inside of you tells me that he is completely obsessed with you. And no one could ever have that effect on him. Now, pause. Because I would have stopped reading right there. Because as my mama, why the fuck are you talking to me about this? And why would you think I would want to read this? Like, as soon as she said this is going to be weird, I honestly would have stopped reading. Because dead or not, it's just some shit I'm not willing to but um I was so jealous that it wasn't me that I drove to your store and damaged it Cambridge I am so sorry please forgive me daughter I am so sorry for causing you to have a kidney transplant I mixed a bunch of mercury from broken thermometers together and I would wipe down your room with it that's why they found a thermometer in your room. I wanted to make it seem like an accident. I was having an insane moment, and she keeps saying that. But I am so happy that Trent could get out and help you. Trent is such a good man, and I know that he would have been an even better father had it not been snatched away from him. Try not to go so hard on him. He'll get it right eventually. Casey was so sneaky to the point where he thought I didn't know about his stupid ass trying to start a drug, drug ring. That won't work because Corrupt has this whole city on lock and other surrounding cities. Also, he stole something from Corrupt and I know where he put it. It's at a storage. I put the address and number on an envelope along with the key inside. It's inside. It's in the side of your Celine purse. Casey's dumbass put it in Kalina's name. He's so smart until he's dumb. In closing, Cam, I'll never forgive myself, so I don't expect you to. At least not yet. I betrayed you in the worst way. I just want to let you know that I love you so much, even though you didn't, even though you think I don't. Lord have mercy. Also, please forgive Malice. He is in love with you and will do anything for you. You both need the love that only you two can give each other. Forgive him. All my love. Like, bitch, was that supposed to make me feel better? Was that supposed to make me feel good that you approve of my union with my husband, although you tried to take him from me? Like, bitch, make it make sense. Um, And so she rushes over to um, Corrupt's house to give him the information of where his goal can be found. And so they went and got the gold and took it to a couple that Trent referred to as his parents, even though they are two white people and he is black. But um, he buys a ring for Olivia and he proposes. She accepts. Um, and of course, because all that stuff happened with Kaysen, all of his uh, cases you know, like the rulings were reversed because they can't, he's dirty, basically. I'm like, I'm trying to write a word as I can. Um, so Trent is out now. He's not going back to jail. Cam plans to buy the building back from Kat's estate and make it into rich cuts for malice like he's always wanted. And she also finds out that she is pregnant with twins. Um, she tells Malice on his graduation day and he proposes to her again with a new ring. Kaysen got life with the possibility of no parole. And on Christmas Day, Malice is acting a fool. He woke uh well, Cam woke up to see him like staring at her mad as fuck. She left in the middle of the night and won't tell him where she went. So she's like, you know, are you accusing me of cheating on you? And they have sex. And he's like, no, nah, baby, you didn't cheat on me. But, you know, like, tell me where you went. So she gets him into the car, puts a blindfold on him, and is like, you know, just just trust me. But he is, like, real, like, mad about it. He got a stank attitude. And she finally gets him out. And he had opened his gift at the house, and it was a key. And she just told him that it was a key to her heart. So when she gets him out the car, she's like, do you still have the key to my heart? And he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So she tells him to take the blindfold off. And when he sees the building, he just falls to his knees. And when they get inside, um, 
it's so lavish it's beautiful on the inside and everybody's just walking around with amazement and he himself cannot believe that he has a woman who would do all this just for him but she also um added on to the uh the company what is it called uh cams or k's paints or something because she's going to start doing makeup outside of the shop as well so they can work together and you know that's their happily ever after which is the end of this crazy ride i don't know if y'all listen to my mayhem uh episodes because i told y'all that this one was crazier than him and olina although mayhem and olina are my favorite but like i said we wouldn't get those uh books without these books so i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope to see you back next week peace and less of my beautiful people so i can stop stumbling all over my words now peace